Welcome to a new episode of OTT Talks. My name is Enrique Mendizabal. I'm the director and founder of On Think Tanks. OTT Talks are friendly conversations with thought leaders and practitioners in the field of evidence-informed policy. In today's episode, we will explore think tanking in the Caribbean, and to help us probe this topic, Dr. Damien King, Executive Director of the Caribbean Policy Research Institute, CAPRI, a not-for-profit public policy think tank dedicated to supporting evidence in foreign policy in Jamaica and the wider Caribbean is with us. Damien, first of all, thank you for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. You know, we have learned a lot from our participation with on think tanks. So I, I'm indeed quite pleased to be here. Great, thank you. Um, let me start by reflecting on something that your colleague Diana Thornbird said a few years ago at one of our conferences. Um, and she said something along the lines that it was rather lonely to be a think tank in an island. And she was referring to Jamaica, where you're based, and of course the Caribbean. So let me start by asking you about this. Um, what is it like running a think tank in Jamaica and, and the wider Caribbean? Can you say something about it? And you know, are there any unique characteristics um, to, to this? Yes, I think there are two elements to running a think tank uh, in Jamaica and in the Caribbean that might be different from the experience of other think tankers. One is that it's not a deep and well-developed think tank space. Civil society organizations do exist, uh, and there is a, you know, there is there is a, a a space that is occupied by many civil society organizations, but policy think tanks are not a lot of them around, and they are not well resourced and highly. Um, you know, capacitated institutions. And so in that regard, Capri is in a lonely space. We are the, the most important think tank in the region. And so it gives us a great deal of responsibility. We almost have to apologize for taking on economic issues and social issues and environmental issues and governance because we are sort of the ones who have the capacity to do that. And so we feel we have to address a broad range of issues. And one of our sort of secondary objectives is ourselves to try and build out the think tank space and to help other institutions that want to you know, join what we do. The second element of why it's a somewhat unique uh, experience being a think tank is that when you are a think tank in a small country, then you tend to have more access to decision makers and to policy makers mm -hmm. than you would have in a larger country. And so that gives us the potential to have greater impact. So it really is an exciting place to, to, to be in this kind of operation. Let me, let me follow with that in particular, because I, I was thinking about that. So a small space, um, People are likely to know each other, um, and not just not just Jamaica. I mean, I think many many countries, um, and even some large countries where policy communities are very small, right? They they usually mm -hmm. are so very close. This happens as well, right? So people go into the same schools, same universities. There's a revolving door taking place, and so everybody knows each other quite well. And so access uh, by think tankers to policymakers is relatively easy. Um, and so I'm, I'm thinking that's that's probably the case in a in a place like Jamaica. But that, that works for you. That works for you and Capri, and Capri. But also works for others, right? Works for those who might be in other parts of civil society, in the private sector, in 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 politics, and whereas whereas you are using those networks to advance evidence informed policy recommendations, others can use the same networks, the same mechanisms to advance sort of the opposite, right? Um, That's an excellent space. point, actually. That's an excellent point. Uh, we, we do feel, though, that by virtue of being an evidence-informed institution, that we do have the advantage of what we are bringing. But you're quite right. It's not as if we have a monopoly on the ears of policymakers. There's another element as well, which is that small countries tend to have 
public bureaucracies that don't have the capacity to inform policy right. from inside the decision-making institution. And so therefore, there is a greater need for public policy think tanks to inform both the public and the policymaker. So our role here, exactly. I think, is relatively more important than would be the case, say, in a United States or a France or even a Mexico. And and so that means you have, but you have to work with others, right? So you have to work with other organizations in that space. You can potentially cover absolutely every area of work and uh, and work on every on every issue. Um, now, as, yes, as a Caribbean, yes, that, that's true. And so, to some extent, Capri is both an institution in and of itself, but also a network. That right. when we have a particular project to work on then we don't confine the participants of each project to those who work for Capri. Okay. And are these these network members, are they individuals? Are they partner organizations um, that you would, you would convene for a specific project or for a specific objective? Both individuals and, and other civil society organizations and academics. And you're based in Jamaica, but you you work regionally. What does that mean? What does that involve? Um, um, that you that you have an opinion about what's going on in other countries in the region. That you do research about those other countries. That you try to inform policy of national governments in the region. Uh, I mean, what, what, how would you describe a, a Caribbean um, operation uh, in in your case? Well, first, you've given me, by your wording, you've given me an excuse to say one of the little sayings that I always say about Capri, which is that Capri doesn't have opinions, it only has conclusions. Okay. But, so our ambitions and our interests are Caribbean-wide. That is why we are the Caribbean right. Policy Research Institute. But funding doesn't come that way. Very often, the funding that you get is tied to a particular country. And most of the mm -hmm. funding we get is in relation to Jamaica because right. of our, this is where our headquarters are. This is where our offices are. So most of the work we do is in relation to Jamaica. But whenever an opportunity arises for us to access funding and do work on a Caribbean-wide basis, we do so and have done so. So you, you've talked about the, the nature of, of your work in, in Jamaica. It's a, it's a, it's a small, small country. Um, you have quite, quite close access to, uh, to policymakers. Um, the, 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 the civil service, the government, the state doesn't have capacity often to, to produce the evidence that is required um, to make decisions, doesn't often have the capacity to engage with the public. So, so Capri has a lot of responsibilities in Jamaica um, and at the same time has a lot of access. Um, is that something that you know, you'd say it's, you know, it's similar to what happens in the, in the rest of the region? Yes, no, it would be similar in, in, in the rest of the region. But as I said, there are not a lot of think tanks in the Caribbean. And so we sort of have that extra responsibility. And um, so you, you've already alluded to a couple of, uh, a couple of challenges, but you've also, one of the things you talked about was, was that um, there isn't that much capacity, but uh, Capri has the capacity, right? And you alluded to that responsibility at the beginning. At the, at the OTT conference um, in May, Simon Maxwell presented an idea that I think was challenged by some people, but he talked, he said that, and I sort of followed this conversation with him afterwards and said, he said that um, the, the, what think tanks need to do uh, nowadays and increasingly to cover a range of issues, uh, to be able to communicate with a range of audiences, uh, to build capacities and competencies on a range of fields, and method, research methods and communication and engagement and capacity building, networking, etc., requires relatively large investments, increasingly larger investments. Um, and, and so it sort of makes sense to have one or two large think tanks in any one polity, in any one policy space. And then just smaller organizations that collaborate, cooperate, and sort of specialize on maybe a key issue, um, a key aspect of you know public policy, a key skill. Maybe they're just good at communications, good at designing policy uh, on education, etc. 
Um, is is that more or less how you you know, you know as you were describing um, Capri? I kind of I saw I saw that reflected a little bit. A, a large organization in the region, accompanied by much smaller, maybe more dynamic, um, more diverse um, group of of organizations playing playing different roles. Um, what do you think about that idea? Is that is that a sustainable idea for the future, or do you have an alternative view in which you you'd hope to see the think tank community in the Caribbean develop? I remember Simon making that point, and I think it's an interesting point, and certainly a direction which we want to explore um, here in the Caribbean, because there 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 is an economy of scale in the management you know and governing of a think tank and so it really makes sense to leverage that and then bring in other organizations that again because we are in a you know we're in small countries are, n- are not are probably never going to have the scale to take on the onerous demands of, of governance and management so 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 that model can certainly work <laughs> and, and and it's something that we're going to you know think about moving forward and who 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 tends to support think tanking in the Caribbean and in in Jamaica in particular? What, what are your for, sources of funding? Your sources of support? We have two sources of funding. One is international partner organizations, which are the aid agencies of the big powers. So we we have gotten funding from the European Union, from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office of the UK, from US Agency for International Development you know, uh, the corresponding Canadian organizations. So that's one source. Uh, Another source, which is not common amongst think tanks, is that we get private sector funding. Right. We have about a dozen or so private companies in Jamaica that give us untied funding on a subscription basis. And that's an important source of funding because it allows us to be to respond more quickly and in a more timely manner to, th- to, to issues that arise. Right. As you would know, the funding cycle of the international organizations is going to run over you know two, three, four years. And you have to formulate, you have to see the call for proposals, you have to respond to it, then they make a decision. And then you end up actually doing the research two years after the ideas were conceived. Mm-hmm. When we have this subscription-based untied funding from private sector organizations and an issue comes up, then we're able to respond. You can react. You can respond quickly. quickly. We had a recent yeah. example when we discovered that during the pandemic, Jamaica's rates of vaccine take-up were actually the lowest in the region except for Haiti. Now, if we had a two-year turnaround time for that, you know, the pandemic would have been over by the time we explained what were the reasons for it and what could be done about it. We were able to jump on that, do some work, and publish it within, you know, five months of the discovery of the problem. And is Capri um, funded by the government in any way, by by consultancy projects or funding? No. So it's just the international cooperation. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, and again... is that by choice? So is that by choice or because the government is just not does not provide funding typically to think tanks? It's difficult. The, the way the way government agencies are funded in Jamaica, it's difficult for them to be able to provide funding for outsourced okay. research. So it's right. actually okay. quite important that we're able to do the research independently of government. So even if they don't have, even as you said, they don't have the capacity necessarily to do research themselves. Um, it is hard for them to commission that research outside of the government. Indeed. And so you have to step you have to step in, but you need the funding. Can I ask you something about so these these businesses that support um, Capri, what are they looking for um, uh, in in providing this support? Well, the conversation between us and these companies is that they recognize the research, weakness and the knowledge weakness within the public bureaucracy because because in a small country the public bureaucracy is small and is never going to have that kind of depth and capacity and they also recognize 
that some of these policy areas are going to affect the business environment that they're operating in. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's an exercise of corporate social responsibility to say we're all going to benefit. So therefore, you know, each, each business needs to play its small part in supporting the work. And what kind of things do they ask for? I mean, do they do they tend to ask you for um, evidence of impact? Um, what, you know, how 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 engaged and how nuanced is their understanding of the role you play as a think tank and the possibility you have to bring about change? You know, I find it to be quite a sophisticated understanding of the need for an right. organization like Capri, but this now overlaps with another element of Capri's work. Capri for a research institute pays as much attention and spends as much money on communication as we do on the research. So right. we, we try to ensure that in every aspect of our work, in, 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 in the kind of wording that we use in the draft of the report, in how it is laid out, in how we engage social media, in how we conduct our traditional media interviews, through all of that, we want to make sure, and we are able to do it, that all the important aspects of our work reach all the stakeholders for a particular policy area. And that redounds to the benefit of getting the private sector funding, because then people see and hear Capri in public policy discussions. Right. And the private sector that is local and, and it is in those discussions hears about Capri. So Indeed. it, you know, it sort of knows that you, you are influential because, because, you know, you're part of their conversation. I remember yeah, having absolutely. a similar discussion with the uh, deputy director of the think tank in the UK um, a few years ago. And I asked him about this. I asked, you know, how do your funders um, what do your funders ask from you in terms of evidence of your impact? And he said, well, not much because they are, they are, they're funding us because they are interested in what we do. And so they are involved in the political discussions that we are involved in. And so they hear about us, right? They go to meetings, they go to conferences, they go to cocktails, they go to friends' houses, and our name pops up. If our name doesn't pop up for a while, they'll come to us and say, what's going on? You know, I've not read about you. I've not seen you. I've not heard about you. But foreign funders, you know, that eight age, those eight agencies that you were saying take a while to give you the funding, they're also so far away that because they're not part of those conversations, they're constantly demanding evidence, right? They want to they wanna give you money, but they also want you to prove to them that you are influential. Um, but you say, well, Very we are, it's just that you are across the Atlantic. That's why you don't know that people are talking about us on a daily basis. Enrique, that is actually well put. That's exactly the situation. So, so, so when we meet with potential private sector funders, we, we never have to explain who we are <laughs> hmm. because, because they have heard Capri in the, in, in the public domain and in the conversations about the things that they actually do care about. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that's a good point, and I think maybe I'm mean, sort of an idea running, you know, got in my head is trying to make that case, right? So trying to use the instead of coming up with these sort of sophisticated and expensive male frameworks for think tanks, is trying to use those audiences, um, those interested and informed audiences, to make that case and say, look, you know, we're not just saying this for nothing. You know, we are investing ourselves in this organization. And we do it because we know we are aware of their influence and the value um, of their of their work. Um, to try to avoid all these extra costs that come with with foreign funding of uh, of of local think tanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, the administrative so burden so of getting yeah. the international funding is, as you would appreciate, uh, considerable. Whereas with the local private sector funding that is untied, then it, uh, it, it, you know, most of what we get from them can go straight into the research. And, and what is the proportion of, uh, of funding that you get from the private sector in terms of your overall budget? Most of it comes from the international organizations. It's only it's, right. so it's, it's a significant minority that comes from the private sector funding. But but it's an it's it's a funding that you are able to use in a strategic way. So it, it right. It, 
carries a so, lot of weight within, so, within your so mission. So it takes on a greater importance because because there are a number of instances where you could respond more quickly to policy situations. And indeed, this is also true for calls from the government. You know, we have had instances where ministers of government have contacted us to say, this is an area that, you know, we are struggling with and we'd like to have some information. Can you do something? And because we have this untied funding, we can respond to those requests. Mm, yes, of course. And that's that's usually the role of think tanks. I mean, I is to respond and not necessarily to do research to respond, but to use what you've done before and to use Absolutely. your your kind of your past investments in understanding an issue um, to provide the best possible explanation, the best possible advice um, at a time when the information is needed. Um, I think that's usually the hardest bit for think tanks often is to know that they don't need to do the you know the full paper to be able to advise but it's the investment you 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 put into being ready for those moments um when the 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 need comes yeah actually we sort of al along those same lines same lines we do some of the work we need to do to get a particular study started by having a bank of concept notes of issues that we think are important so we have sort of begun to think through how we would approach an issue. So right. by the time we get the call, to You're say, ready. if you have not done something on this, can you do something? Then, then we have made a start and we know what we need to do. Yeah. And so we can yeah. respond more quickly. Great. Let me ask you, let me, let me move to a couple of, uh, sort of closing practical questions. So what, one question that I have is, um, of course, you know I'm Latin American. I'm Peruvian. I have engaged with think tanks in 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 Latin America quite a bit, uh, and of course, and the Caribbean is left out often. Um, can I? I mean, which is a shame because because we share, you know, the region shares a lot of common history and a lot of common common challenges. We have the language barrier um, to you know to blame for a part of it, but. What are your natural networks, you know, sort of for for Capri? Um, who are your natural think tank partners? You know, who, where are the the organizations beyond the Caribbean that you would you would normally uh, engage with that might invite you to conferences or to partner or that you might naturally go to? Well, this is an area where Capri has struggled because we are in a region where the think tank space is not well developed. Exactly. We, we th this is the reason why we are we are enthusiastic members of on think tanks and why we are also members of Southern Voice, uh, and we have tried not successfully to establish partnerships with other think tanks outside of the Caribbean, because of course, as we appreciate, you know, each think tank is going to benefit from that kind of collaboration and that kind of you know exchange of ideas and exchange of approaches. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we need to do more of at Capri and have not really been successful in establishing those partnerships, but we do keep trying. Right. And uh, looking into the future, what, where do you see Capri and, and this, this, this think tank community in the Caribbean that, as you say, is not yet um, fully developed? Well, it would benefit the entire region. And it would it would even benefit Capri if there were there, there was more think tank work going on and right. other institutions. So one of the things that we try to do is we spend a lot of time not just doing the work of producing policy reports and trying to influence policy, but thinking about how we are doing it and documenting the processes thinking about the processes themselves and documenting them. And right. for ourselves, that has the advantage of building up institutional learning and institutional memory. But in terms of sort of spreading the gospel of think tank work, then it gives us a basis on which we can nurture other mm -hmm. think tanks or other people who want to establish think tanks in particular. I like that. I like that. I think... Um... I agree with you that um, I've oft often said that the contribution that think tanks can make is not necessarily in 
informing or promoting a single policy, but it's often in building the, you know, the infrastructure for better informed policy in the future, whether it's through the training that goes on of staff and you know researchers who come through the organization and then go on to work in government or in the private yep. sector or in academia or elsewhere. Um, as you said, through sharing what you've learned, um, uh, sharing tools, sharing good practice, um, by changing the narrative, right? So as you said, yeah. Caprice in, in, the, in the discussion, then people are saying, oh, you know, a think tank said this, a researcher said this. That means that people start to appreciate this role. And, but we don't often tell stories about those ways in which think tanks influence policy. We tend to focus too much on the, the policy change, right? But th yeah, that's no, the, absolutely. I, the, the, that's reason the rare one, right? The reason I'm nodding yeah. vigorously is that we actually say that one of our objectives is staff development that when you come and you spend time at Capri, in addition to the output, you're learning the process of using evidence and creating an argument and being able to communicate it. And you take that with you when you go to yeah. work for other organizations, very often the government. And also it's resonating with me that in addition to just the policy recommendation, what we are adding to the national conversation is that evidence should be a part of it. So if the conversations we are in, people are accustomed to hearing Capri saying, here is the evidence, here is the reason, then even in conversations that we are not in, those questions are going to be asked. Mm -hmm. So it is just mm -hmm. creating a broader appreciation for the importance of evidence-informed uh, information, you know, and, 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 that, and that area being represented in addition to what the interest groups are putting into the conversation. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, that's that was very, very interesting. And um, thank you very much for painting a picture of think tanking in Jamaica and the Caribbean and the challenges and actually the, the, the unique opportunities to learn about different models of doing think tanking, of working as a think tank and contributing to public policy in, in any country. I think, uh, I think you know, as, as you heard me say, I think, we can learn from every context, and there's always uh, there's always good lessons to to identify and to um, adapt to other places. So I, I look forward to continuing this conversation, and um, uh, yeah, I look forward to maybe one day organizing an event in 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 Jamaica and helping um, and joining joining your mission to build the the, the think tank community in your region. We would be very honored to uh, to be part of that. We Thank would you. be thrilled to be able to. Would be thrilled to be able to host you in Jamaica. Let me let me return the thanks because while while on think tanks is learning from the individual organizations, it's a tremendous service that you bring that information together within on think tanks, and that allows us by our participation in the conferences and outside of the conferences to really do a better job of what we do. And it's a tremendous service uh, that that on think tanks has done for all the think tanks that are a part of it. And we look forward to continued participation. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for participating.